All right, in this section, we're going to be talking about rectangular coordinates and graphing equations. Uh, so let's start off with a review of the rectangular coordinate system, or um, the x and y axis system. Sometimes it's called that. Um, sometimes you'll also hear it referred to as the Cartesian coordinate system. And that is because this was developed by a young man named Rene Descartes. And Rene Descartes uh, was, you know, lived um, many, many, many years ago. And he was, if you're familiar with the story, the young man who uh, developed the Cartesian coordinate system because he was laying in bed and saw a fly on the ceiling and tried to come up with a way to describe the exact position of the fly on the ceiling. And therefore, the X and the Y um, axis system was born. And that's exactly what this system does, is it allows us to be able to give basically a location name uh, to every single position w on a plane, or you know, a flat surface basically is what a plane is. So if we look at the way this is set up, we have two axes, which are basically just number lines going from negative to positive. Uh, the horizontal is called the x-axis, and the vertical is called the y-axis. Now, each one of these is broken up into four parts by this axis system. This first part over here is called quadrant 1. The second over here is quadrant 2. Notice that I'm going counterclockwise. And then we would have quadrant 3. I'm just going to abbreviate that to quad 3. And then quadrant 4. So there are four quadrants starting in the upper right hand corner and moving counterclockwise. Also notice that whenever I named those, I used Roman numerals. If you say quad 3 written like this, that is incorrect. Quadrants are always named using Roman numerals, so make sure you remember that. Now we also have uh, this point right here where the axes meet. That's a very important point. That's called the origin. And um, if you think about the word origin, usually it means the beginning or the start of something. And that's exactly the function of the origin in the x and the y axis system it acts as a beginning point or a starting point so that we can name any position on this plane, this space, by its x and then its y coordinates. So for instance, let's say that I wanted to name this position right here. Starting at the origin, we would name its x part first. So to, to, if I were going to tell somebody how to get to this point, I would say move left or move in the negative direction seven units. So that would be a negative seven. And then move down or move in the negative y direction two units. So I literally am saying move left seven units and then down two units, its x and its y parts. This is um, point notation. It is using the x coordinate and also the y coordinate of the point. It is extremely important that you use proper notation and that you label points using both their x part and their y part.